Hello, in this lecture we're going to define economics, we're going to define scarcity, and we're going to see how scarcity relates to the definition of economics. There are multiple different ways that we could define economics, but they should all include the fact that economics is a social science. What does it mean to be a social science? It's going to be a study of human behavior, human action. That's what a social science is. We know that it has the word science in it. What does the word science mean? Science generally means that we're going to have observations about the world. We're going to try to see what is true about the world. How do we do that? We observe the world in a scientific way. For example, if we're testing a particular thing like gravity, we want to take that thing into the lab as much as possible. We want to eliminate all other factors except for the ones that we are testing, observe that thing that we are testing, and through that observation we believe that we can see something that is true about the way the world works. That's going to be similar for social sciences. What's the difference with a social science? Now we're studying human behavior and human action. We can apply those same scientific methods. We can have tests in terms of human behavior, human action, but you're probably thinking, well, that's going to be a little bit more messy. People are basically different. So there's going to be some things that maybe how the nerves fire and these types of things that are going to be same that we might be able to just observe and test empirically. But when you think about human behavior as a whole, it's going to be a lot more difficult to to find exactly what one individual behavior will do what we can do is make assumptions about larger groups of behavior what the tendency for behavior will be through sci a scientific method through the observation of what has happened in the past under different conditions and so that's basically what we want to do with economics we want to see how are people going to behave within the terms of a social science so specifically what we are looking to is how are they going to behave in relation to making decisions with regard to scarce resources. So we want to know how people will behave. We're studying how people will behave in terms of their decision making, of course, with regards to scarce resources. What are scarce resources? That's going to be the idea that individuals have unlimited desires. And if you think about individuals and society, there's going to be a lot more desires than there are resources out there. What that means is that we can't do everything we want to do. We have to limit what we're going to do, and that means that we have to make trade-offs, and those trade-offs are, of course, the decisions we're going to make in terms of what we're going to consume. Now, we often think of economics just in terms of money, but we're thinking about really everything in terms of choices and in terms of economics. We think of costs in economics not just in terms of dollars, although dollars are useful. That's why we made them, <laughs> so that we can measure different things. But it doesn't measure everything. When we think about time, where are we going to spend our time? Time is a resource. If we have to do something and spend more time in one area, we can't spend that time somewhere else. And different economic settings have things set up where some things take more time than other things. And if we take that into consideration, we can see how broad the, the idea of economics is. It really has to do with decision making for all the different types of things that we're going to do because every choice we make has a cost, and that cost being the next best thing that we could have done. So we want to study how people will make those decisions in general in terms of human action with regard to different economic settings. So as the economic settings change, how will people tend to change their actions over time? That's going to be the study of economics.